Hey guys, I wanted to jump on quick and do a quick review. A long time coming, actually. Um, Dave at Big Dog Brewing, uh, myself, and a buddy of ours, Scott, all brewed uh, Black is Beautiful, actually back in Christmas, over Christmas break in between Christmas and New Year's. So I've uh, been trying to get three schedules together as a bear with COVID and uh, everything else going on. So uh, unfortunately, we got two out of the three. So what we ended up doing was Dave brought his system. He has the April... Uh, anvil foundry system he brought his system over um, brewed on my system and i made a double batch uh, it was an eight gallon eight gallon batch and we split it uh four and four and we all used the same same recipe and we just split um split into our different yeast uh so let me check and see i actually asked dave if he yep uh so dave used wlp004 um, I don't remember what Scott ended up using, and I used Omega Scottish Scottish Ale that was left over from a brew day that Kilt Kicker that Matt and I did at Rec Brewing. So, uh, so these are the two beers. Let's see if I can get a decent shot of them in there together. Pretty darn close. They're probably a hair light for Black is Beautiful. Um, what I ended up doing is we took the recipe as as is off of Weathered Souls when they put it out to AHA. And then I'd watch a couple of different videos. Uh, Don Osborne put out a video and was talking about he brewed it. And I think I brewed it exactly as it was stated on the recipe that came out from the AHA. And he thought it was a little too um, aggressive with the, with the dark malts. So I chatted with him back and forth in the comment sections on YouTube and uh, based off of some of his recommendations and Dawson, one of the guys in, from Chop and Brew from back in the day in Brewing TV, he, they kind of had talked a little bit and talked about backing them down. So I basically took the recipe and just backed the dark uh, roasted malts down a little bit, cut them probably by maybe a, a quarter. Uh, not a ton, but it's definitely affected the color a little bit. So when you look at it, it's a little porterish, maybe in terms of color. Uh, but got some nice chocolate coffee notes in it. So this one is mine, and then this one is Dave's. I get stronger flavor, or excuse me, stronger aroma off of Dave's. And again, this was the Scottish Ale. Uh, I believe that's Omega Scottish Ale. And then this is the WLP004. I think that is a, I gotta look it up. I think it's a straight stout, um, stout yeast. And so his nose, his has got a better nose. I like that nose better. Carbonation wise, you can't really talk about it. He dropped off a grumbler today. So we traded some yeast and, uh, uh, for the yeast experiment with DKN. So if you're not part of BrewTubers, check it out, www.brewtubers.com. Uh, some really cool experiments coming up. So check it out, become a member. It's a There's a free membership. There's a paid membership. Uh, the, with a free membership, you do get into Discord. There's a channel in the lobby, lots of people on there, lots and lots of great information, tons of brewers with tons of knowledge. So check them out, it doesn't cost you anything. And if you like it and you enjoy it, it's 50 bucks for a year, so it's worthwhile. I get tons of information. I have a question, I throw it out there, and I'll, within minutes, get four, five, six answers, and by 24 hours, I've had 10 answers, so lots of information there, but wanted to throw that in there. Um, also, a quick thanks to our sponsors, uh, as again, we are an official club now, Imperial Yeast, Five Star Chemical, and Beer and Wine Hobby. Uh, that is the local, um, or excuse me, not local, it's a local homebrew shop, to Massachusetts, but it's the um, official sponsor for BrewTubers. Official yeast is Imperial Yeast, and then Five Star, if you don't know about them, they're Star Sand and PD, PBW. That's the, the big ones that they probably, most people know about. There's lots of different, uh, uh, lots of different uh, items out there for those. So if you haven't used either one of those three, make sure you, you hit them up for whatever your needs are. Um, great, great vendors for all three of those items. So all right, let's launch you guys. I'm going to taste here and see what we think. Definitely getting getting that coffee. It's pretty straight on, straight on stout. Wish I had nitro. Don't have that. 
but it's everything you think about in a stout, your roasted grains, getting that uh, coffee, dark chocolate, um, pretty smooth. It's not punch you in the face type of thing. Pretty close, I would say, overall. I think the biggest difference I think the biggest difference right now is aroma. I think Dave's um, aroma is a little bit better. Maybe the flavor in mine. I think it's a little bit amped up a little bit more. And I think Dave's is a little more rounded. So it'd be hard grading them. I think they're both really good examples. Um, and I'm, I'm being real picky right now Try it because you have them side by side trying to figure out what one's best. Um, so if I had to choose kind of going down through, I'd take the aroma from mine, the flavor from Dave's carbonation. Again, it's hard because mine's coming off a tap and his is, was in a grumbler. Uh, we just did a, a trade on the front porch today. He got off of work. I left it out there this morning. Uh, again, the yeast experiment with DKN. So I had a, excuse me, a Kvik, Kvike, whatever you call it, a uh, strain that he was going to use in a brew day tomorrow. And I just grew it up and then left it out there. And then we decided just to do a quick trade after work. So so his sat in a grumbler, so it's hard. You know, if it's not both off a tap, it's hard to tell. But man, I so far, both really good beers. If I was to knock it, I'd knock it for the color. Brew it again next winter. Probably up the, uh, the roasted malts just a little bit, just to get that color up there into that really black. Let me see if I can get a really close one. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good. This is mine. So that's actually a pretty, you can kind of see through the top, that mahogany. Um, and then Dave's. Let's see, let's see if we can get that to focus there. Same type of thing. So um, had a blast brewing with Dave and Scott. Um, hoping to get Scott maybe into the to the club. Um, at least as a free, free membership to start. Uh, but I think he would be, he's gotten into brewing the last year or two. Um, having a, a ball with it. He's still an extract, um, wants to do a couple more of those and then would like to get into all grain. Um, he's already got a Hydra, which makes me jealous. He's got better equipment than I do already and I've been brewing for six years. So, um, But just want to jump on quick and uh, just again say thanks to our sponsors. Again, if you haven't used them, Imperial Yeast for our yeast sponsor, Beer and Wine Hobby, local homebrew shop. Again, they're in uh, Massachusetts, but they ship everywhere. Got all kinds of stuff. People there are awesome. Gennaro, the owner, if you don't, ha if he doesn't have it, he'll get it for you. Awesome people. And then Five Star, uh, again, PBW and Star Sand, probably the two biggest things that most home brewers use. Thank you very much for all of you guys do. Really appreciate it. Uh, Weathered Souls, Black is Beautiful, be having that as an open source recipe. Appreciate that in the uh, American Home Brewers Association. So um, check out BrewTubers.com. Join in the fun. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Uh, it is Friday. April 9th. So we are finally heading into spring. Just mowed my lawn for the first time this year, but it is New York. Some of you guys I know in the South have been mowing for a month now. So hope everybody has a great one. Just wanted to jump on for a quick one and, uh, and we'll talk to you guys later. Slots everybody. Have a great day.